Good evening from wherever you're watching this program from. This is the evening Vespers at Nairobi East SDA Church. May you join us this evening as you welcome the Sabbath day. Uh, we'll have a song service and then we'll have a sermonette from our very pastor, Pastor Oscar Kambona. Shall we have a short prayer before we begin the service? Our Lord in heaven, we humble ourselves yet again before your mighty presence, thanking you for the grace that you've uh, accorded us with. As we worship you this evening, Lord, I pray that may your Holy Spirit lead us into your righteousness and guide us that our worship may find favor before your mighty presence. May your will be done, this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, my name is Polikap Mahanga. Next to me is Annette Opio. And uh, next to Annette is Lydia Oyo. Together we'll be your choristers for today. And we'll sing a set of two songs for this uh, worship service. Our first song is hymn number 633, When We All Get to Heaven. When We All Get to Heaven from SDA Hymnals 633. Love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion, bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Pastor Oscar Cambona, we will close this song session with hymn number 632, Until Then. Hym hymn number 632 from our SDA hymnals, Until Then. 
my heart can sing when I pause to remember a heart ache is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this travel world is not my final goal but until then my heart will go on singing until then with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold the city until the day God calls me home the things of earth will be If we recall, they're borrowed for a while. And things of art that cause the heart to tremble, remember them will only bring a smile. But until then, my hands will go on singing. Until then, Now welcome Pastor Kambona Oscar to speak to the children of God. God bless you. To all our viewers, we thank God for opportunity and as we listen to the word of God this night, we, in a special way, grateful for the time. We're grateful for the blessings. And we ask that his spirit may be upon us as we study the scriptures and even as we enjoy the blessed Sabbath of the Lord. Welcome all of you and uh, wherever you're watching from, whether home, we pray that uh, the Spirit of the Lord may be with each and every one of us as we listen to the Word of God. So, uh, very fast, we, we are going to move to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 19. We're going to look chapter 19, and um, we are going to read through from verses 1. Um, through to verses 10, we're going to have the word of God from, uh, from that text, from um, verses 1 to verses 10. And uh, before we start um, inviting that we all believe and pray, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, that you may speak unto us this moment. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and whatever the message you have for us this evening, it may reach each and every soul. Speak to us at the stillness of thy voice, that all of us may come to conviction and do according to that which you have commanded us in the scriptures. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're reading from the book of Luke, chapter 19. Um, I'm going to read through. The scripture says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. I'll get back to he was rich in course of my sermon. And they sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not, for 
the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Verses 5, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And verses 6, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood, that's verse 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Verses 9, and Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. And the son, sorry, for the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. And uh, my topic this evening is he climbed. He climbed. We see uh, Zacchaeus, uh, a man who the scripture says was rich and uh, was a publican. In the history, publicans were the tax collectors, Roman tax collectors. And uh, more about the publicans had nothing to do with Jesus. We remember when uh, John the Baptist was preparing a way for Jesus. You no, know, he spoke to the publicans and he spoke uh, to the soldiers. And here we find an, a publican who we're not told of who spoke unto him. We're not told of who showed him the way. But the scripture only records that he was a man of little stature. And what could hinder Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus was not actually his stature. Whatever hindered Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus was the fact that other men were of greater stature than he was. He was a short man. So if there would be a provision that no man would be around Jesus, Zacchaeus did, could not have to climb the sycamore tree. But one thing I would, would get to first is um, Zacchaeus is not a man blaming others for anything. When his choice, when he sought to see Jesus, he didn't mind who was taller than he was. He didn't blame, he didn't put the blame on anyone. All he needed to do is to know where he would pass. And so he made a move, he runs before him and he climbs unto the sycamore tree. Now, my topic this evening is to see what happens uh, in Zacchaeus when he does consider his stature, when he is not brought down, when he makes a choice that not any man's stature would be a wall between him and Jesus. He didn't blame anyone for his stature. Neither was anyone responsible for the fact that he couldn't see Jesus. The press around Jesus could not give him room to see him, but he made a choice. He had his, it was upon himself to find his way to Jesus. So the scripture says, first, he ran. He ran ahead. And I'm looking at the, his, the attitude he finds no, so often people uh, you know, keep blaming other things. They keep blaming other people. Whatever happens around you, you uh, so often people find blames. Now I'm not able to see him because of so and so who is around him. But 
No, I believe that God can never put you on a rough road without giving you strong shoes. When he made Zacchaeus of uh, little stature, he gave him an idea that for you to see Jesus and you are not as tall as people around you are. You are not as tall as your eyes can reach him when people throng around him. He gave Zacchaeus an idea to run ahead of Jesus. He ran ahead and climbed up to the second tree. So I'm looking at Zacchaeus as one who in the ideal situation, one who is not able to not put the blame on any other person. Zacchaeus knew, but if one day I will be lost, if one day God will be looking at me, and he never finds me in the fall of Christ, then my little stature will not be an excuse. I will never stand before God and tell him, you know, I was lost because I was of little stature. He knew that, and I still believe that no one will be lost and tell God, no, I, I got lost because of so and so who was around Jesus. So and so who was also in the team that moved with Jesus. There's no blame. And I look at him as one whose mind is very positive. So often people you know, are not so positive. When they see challenges, you know, they, instead of them getting strong, they can do something wrong. But for him, no, he viewed challenges as not something that comes his, in his life to make him, him wrong, but to make him strong. By that challenge, he, th he thought of a way to climb. He knew this is too little to make me wrong. This is too little to make me part ways with Jesus. And so often, even in our Christian life, there could be some people around Jesus whose standards may make you feel that you are far from him or whose standards, the standards they have set, you find yourself, you are not able to match that standard. But what Zacchaeus does tells me that no wrong standard or no one is ever to be blamed. If you miss heaven, we are not going to blame anyone. If you miss to see God, if you miss to be with Jesus, if you miss to see Jesus, then no one is to be blamed for that. So Zacchaeus is one who believes that challenges come in our way not to make us better, but to make us better. So often people, when are faced by challenges, instead of them be that making them strong, they often do something wrong. Instead of challenges coming to make them wise, it makes them wild. And I'm, I'm in love with his attitude. He does mind who is not like him. You know, he doesn't even look at himself against other people. He has known already he is a man of little stature. And whatever height another man has beside him, he tells himself, that is not as good as can make me part ways with Jesus. No one's achievement, no one's position, no one's way of conducting themselves. I'm not going to let how other people treat me around Jesus, build a wall between me and him. So he chose to climb. So when, when he runs, so often people run when uh, they are chasing for something precious or when they are pursuing something precious. Again, people run when escaping something that would take something precious from them. Like so often when something would come that threatens your life, you, you, you'll be so good at using your feet. The body system will be prepared to help you escape. So he ran, but his run is a different one. He knows that he must see Jesus. Jesus is on the move. And when he moved at a pace he moved before, he may miss him. So what he does is he chooses to run. And we read from the book of Romans chapter 13, verses 11. Friends, we are told 
that we should know the time. And that Romans 13, 11, the scripture says, and knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake up out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Friends, it's a time now to run. And so often one of the reasons as to why you have to run is because them who seem to be around Jesus, them who seem to be with Jesus may not give you opportunity to see him. May not give you opportunity to see him. And I don't want to put blame on them that were around Jesus. They did nothing wrong. Being born taller than Zechariah was was not a mistake. And I want to say, there are people in the church, there are people around Jesus, whose nature may seem to build a wall between you and Christ. But my focus is that we have what got into Zacchaeus himself. You've got to choose to climb. And when you climb, you have to run on your own. You have to go up the sycamore tree on your own. You can hear the word of God. You can't be told that Jesus is passing. But no sermon is going to hang you on the sycamore tree. No, no preacher is going to put you on the sycamore tree. You've got to hear for yourself. And you have to make it your own choice, your, make your own decision to run ahead if you want to see Jesus. Running meant he needed to make a move that was different from the moves he always made before. I don't think in his life, Zacchaeus was a man who kept running at anything or kept running when he had an appointment. But not to see Jesus, he knew I don't have to walk like I walk on other things. I don't have to move the way I move when pursuing other things. When I need Jesus, it's an opportunity now to run. Nothing else, nothing ever can take me to Jesus. Nothing ever can make me reach Jesus if I don't run and climb. So he goes ahead and he climbs on the side of the tree. So he ran before him, for he knew Jesus was to pass that way. I'm interested. And I know this is one of the reasons that placed Zacchaeus at a good standing with meeting Jesus. He knew where Jesus was to pass. And more probably, he must have found out that for himself. He knew. And I think Zacchaeus was never with Jesus at the time he's running, but he knew he had a foreknowledge. Jesus always passes this way. We, we all know. Nobody will be lost and say, I didn't know the way. Nobody at all. You can never be lost and someday tell God, no, God, I didn't know the way. Jesus is the way and the scripture makes this so clear. So he runs and I love him because he knew the way. And so often we find many know the way, but so few are on the race. It's one thing knowing the way is a different thing running and making a choice to climb. So many are informed, but so few are transformed. They know the way, but so few go in by it. The scripture even speaks unto us and tells us that the two ways, one is a broad one that leads to destruction, and another one is a, is a narrow one, a straight gate. And we are told to go in by it, but so often we know that this narrow and you know, so often I would think that a narrow gate or a narrow path is one that would be hard to go through. But Zacchaeus, you know, Zacchaeus is not on the way that carries many people around Jesus. No, he made a choice. I think it's narrow with him when he goes up the second tree. It's not an easy it's not an easy journey, but he goes because he knows what he desires to have. That is to have Jesus. And so I'm interested in verses 5. The scripture says that when Jesus came to the place, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. 
Friends, you can never make an attempt to climb and Jesus passes looking down. When you make an attempt to climb, most assuredly, Jesus will never pass you looking down. And I, I think this is one of the things that has been an encouragement to me. And you know, he climbs and not many are in his company. And we're going to see what happens even after he climbs. Not all were with Jesus welcomed Christ's invitation that he extended to Zacchaeus. Many were moving with Jesus, but so few were, were interested in them that Jesus himself was looking for. And we have a number of such people in the church today. We have a number of such who, you no, know, they profess to know him, but in their works, they deny him. When Jesus gets, he tells Zacchaeus, come down. And the next thing that happens, Zacchaeus makes haste and you no, know, he cometh down and receives him joyfully. And verse 7, the scripture now says that when they saw it, these people who before were as tall as could not let Zacchaeus see Jesus, they had a standard that was not compatible with Zacchaeus' desire to see Jesus. I don't know what, whatever the standard we have only set in, in the church. We, I don't know what standard it is. But here comes another moment when Zacchaeus makes an effort and he climbs. And when Christ, who will never look down when you make an, an attempt to climb, Christ get, gets there and asks him to come down. These people again, mama. Now, go with me to his attitude still. And you know, Zacchaeus knew who was calling him. Whoever said Zacchaeus come down, was someone different from those who murmured. And I was always say this, if you can't control your environment, control your focus. If God has not given you control over your environment, he has given you control over your focus. Some people will not give you room to walk with Jesus. And if you give up any attention, if you pay any attention to them, you are going to miss Jesus. If Zacchaeus focused, on those who are murmuring more than he who called him, he could have never come down. And so often we find a lot to stop us when we listen to those who murmur than he who calls us. In the scriptures, throughout the text, I've not seen a place where no Zacchaeus tells Jesus, Jesus, sit down and let me tell you something about these guys. Zacchaeus is never minded. <laughs> he doesn't care what they do. He only has his focus on to Jesus. When he ran, he knew when I get to that second tree and this is the way that he will pass, I only have to get to climb. I don't have to seek an approval from them. I've got to climb for my own good. I've learned something. But in every environment we may be, some other people may, may only be interested in something that may pull you down. In every environment you may be, something like may happen that way. But get to me back to the attitude that Zacchaeus has. And you know, this, the same people who mama were the same people whose stature could not allow him to see Jesus. Till he thought of climbing, but even after making an attempt to climb, these people have not given up on him. They murmur and they say, but this, this man, this man Jesus Christ, is going to be a guest with the one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus' life has taught me this, that the very act of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look. I learned that from this old preacher who, who helped me. Now We stood together with him when we looked into Zacchaeus' way of doing things, his attitude. And I learned that the very act 
of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look, and Zacchaeus knew that. So he didn't want to look into any evil of them who were around him. He learned that if you have no control over your environment, you have strength that comes from God to control your focus. And so the winning attitude that, that Zacchaeus go with finally leads him to what he wanted. He, Christ himself did not have uh, any business to shut up them that were murmuring. And I'll tell you, you could be one who has gone through the same thing that Zacchaeus was going through. Jesus himself is never in the business of shutting up those who murmur when you want to get to him. He has given you ability to control your focus. We don't see anywhere in the scriptures when Jesus now tells those who murmur, Shh, shut up. He doesn't say that. So let's not fight the battles that do not lead us to Jesus Christ. There are some people around us, no, and we have nothing to do about them. We, we have no control over them. That's how they are. And just to let you know again, that there will be no excuse whatsoever. Getting, got, going, getting there to tell God, you know, God, I was lost because so and so murmured. Nobody is going to get an entry to everlasting kingdom if they want to walk away because somebody murmured. Friends, we've got to be strong. And we have to let our conviction rise above their murmuring. Anything can happen. This is a spiritual warfare. And where we go to see Jesus, or the way Jesus passes, is not excluded, no. They will follow you up. Wherever you go, go to this church, you're going to find something that doesn't please you. You go to this church, you'll find someone who mama. It doesn't matter who mamas. What's your focus? If your focus is still on Jesus Christ, you're going to go home with him. And so Zacchaeus come down. And when Zacchaeus comes down, Zacchaeus has an opportunity to go home with Jesus. And I, I want to make this an appeal. Every moment you get to Jesus Christ, remember to take him home. Take Jesus home. I want to say this. In your family, the greatest inheritance you can leave behind for your family is not what you leave behind for them, it is what you leave behind in them. Carry Jesus home. When Jesus be carried home, every home with Jesus in it, I'm telling you, it will be easy to climb. It will be easy to run. Regardless of how others would be standing like a, a wall between you and Jesus, it will be easy. You will find more and more of Sycamore tree. You will find strength and strength to climb. You only need to carry Jesus home. Friends, when, when, when Zacchaeus is finally home, chapter number 8, Zacchaeus stood and said this to the Lord. Before many sermons were given unto him, Zacchaeus says this, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Half of my goods. You know what made Zacchaeus far from Jesus there before? Before this day, when he climbs up the Sycamore tree, he was a tax collector. He was gathering more and more of it. But he comes to his senses that what a man is, is better than what a man has. So he says, half of my goods I give to the poor. No, one of the things that are happening this very moment, many people have a close association 
with the things they found here on earth or the people they found here on earth than him who brought them here on earth. Very many have material attachment to the things of this world. They have not set their affections on the things above. But here comes Zacchaeus. When you truly climb to be with him, you will do what Zacchaeus does. He tells him, half of my goods I give to the poor. I want to remind you what I was taught by a very old preacher. He asked if he would know the most sensitive nerve in human body. And so good scientists really did a try and but he ended up telling us something that is close to what we see in Zacchaeus. He said that the most sensitive nerve in human body is the nerve that is connected to the wallet. And do you know what happens or what is found in the wallet? Zacchaeus, having climbed, for him it's now not a hard thing to tell Jesus half of my goods I give to the poor. For this gospel to reach all the nations, for it to reach everyone, it has to do two things. It must touch your heart. It must change your heart and touch your wallet. For this gospel of Jesus Christ to reach the whole world, we give an opportunity, we give a duty to make all disciples to, for us to go into the whole world. For this gospel to change the whole world, it must touch, it must change your heart and touch your wallet. There's no doubt about this. The moment Zacchaeus climbs and there he is with Jesus, he doesn't wait for any, you know, any sermon of giving. He doesn't wait. And that's why Christ himself says it's more blessed to give than to receive. If you see someone ready to give to support the work of God, like Zacchaeus now does that to feed the poor. And remember Christ himself says that when you feed, when you give them a drink, when you clothe them, when you accept them in, he will say you did it to himself. So much as you think you're doing it, you know, doing that to your neighbor. One day, Christ, when he returns, he'll say, you did that unto me. Christ reminds me that whatever good you do to others will never die. But whatever good you do to yourself dies with you. When Christ comes the second time, we hear him say, you know, for I was hungry and you, you fed me, I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink, naked, and you clothed me. But Christ does count what people did for themselves. Because whatever you do for yourself, whatever good you do for yourself, dies with you. But whatever good you do unto others, in the name of the Lord, will never die. This is a reward for everyone who does that which is meant to give glory unto God. Them who have made a choice to climb. Zacchaeus finally finds that the, the most precious thing he can have on earth was never the things he found on earth, but meeting him who brought him on earth, accepting Jesus Christ, and being with him in his house. The things he had held for a long time, dearly and without letting go, one who had taken from people even no. He now promises, I will return unto them fourfold. One who there before had laid upon himself, no, his heart was full of the appetite for the things of this world. Right now, he gives himself to Jesus Christ. He sets his affection on the things above. I pray that this message would be one that will ask everyone to do like he did. That we climb. It's a message, it's a moment to climb. It's not a moment to tell Jesus, no, Jesus, no, I don't have enough. Uh, the moment you have accepted Jesus Christ, 
at your home, in your heart, it is one thing you will do. You will walk with him hand by hand. You, wherever he leads, you shall go. The most blessed thing Jesus declares, verses 10, and Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save that which was lost. The most blessed thing. He didn't come for the righteous. He didn't come because if, he, if Jesus was to come for the righteous, he would have never found anyone to die for. He only came for such a one as Zacchaeus, such a one as me, and you will we hear him. And will we make a move? After you hear the word of God, after God speaks unto you, after you know the way, the next thing we ought to do is to make a move. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But it doesn't live by hearing. It lives by doing. It lives by making a move. Can we all make a run? And with patience. And let us look unto Jesus. Let's not look unto them who mama. Let's not look at them who have no a stature greater than we have. Hebrews chapter 12 from verses 1 through to 3. The scripture says that Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with a so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Friends, we have to run with patience. The race which is set before us without blaming anyone. There are a lot of people to blame. If, if you don't want to reach heaven, there are a lot of reasons. There, there will be many reasons for you not to reach heaven, and the reasons will be wide and broad. All we need is to accept Jesus Christ. When we hear him speak to us, when, when we hear the voice of him who died for us, Christ died on the cross. And he died to pay a debt of sins he never owed. Because we owed a debt we could never pay. Until to enjoy with me. The great joy that now Zacchaeus has when he finally gets home. And you know, when he looks at himself at a time people mum at him. He was wondering, how possible is it for me to be with him? No, when I, I, I look at him feeling so blessed, and he says that if it were not for this Jesus, if Jesus would have considered what my past was, if Jesus would have listened to why they were murmuring. And so, Zacchaeus enjoys this blessed message. And he says, if I look at myself, I don't know how I can be saved. But when I look unto Jesus, I don't know who can deny me, who can stop me. I don't know how I can be lost. Friends, this evening I'm inviting you to share with me the blessings from the word of God. Let us keep focused looking unto him. He is our Lord and Savior. Let's serve him with whatever he has put in our hands. Let us give ourselves unto him. Let us not have anyone to blame. It is a race for me to run. It is a mountain for me to climb. It does not matter what people say about me, what they say about you. It does not matter. If you can't control your environment, God has given you power to control your focus. And this evening, I'm praying with you. The, the Lord, the good Lord himself may give you strength to climb. Regardless of what happens, 
regardless of the challenges. God can never put you on a rough road without giving you strong shoes. He knows why he has placed you there. And if you move in his spirit, you, it, you will never miss what you desire. If that's your prayer, I will pray that Christ himself may give us strength to stand. Let's believe and pray. Loving Father, in Jesus' name, we asking you for the strength, one, to identify who we are, and one, that we, not, we may not give or point accusing fingers unto them who are trying not to put a wall between us and you, that we may work on ourselves, we may get to run with patience, Lord. It's our opportunity to climb. We don't have anyone to blame for this. And Lord, we pray, like you did to Zacchaeus, every effort that your children will make to climb, Lord, don't look down. Don't pass looking down. Whatever reasons people have to mama, Lord, we pray that you may accept us. We want to go home with you. We, may, we want to have you in our hearts. And Lord, the strength to abide with you may be one that we receive from you. We may not look at what others may say about us, what, how they may mama. Give us the right attitude, a winning attitude, Lord, that we may run this race with patience. This blessed Sabbath, Lord, we pray that you may pour your blessings unto us. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.